Hello and welcome back to the Sunday Sit Down. You are joined by me, your guest Hudson Raps, and this week we're coming back with a guest we had in our first month. Kelsey Aresis is back. Hi Hudson, thank you for having me. This is uh, this is great. So much fun. Um, I've been thinking about it since we met last time. What I want to do next, getting ready for today. This is just a really, really cool thing you're doing. So thank you for having me. Thank you for being on here and like. We've talked. We talked for a good thirty minutes about just music, and you're like, "What are you listening to now?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm like, what? Like all of it? Like it's great. Trust me." So if you ever want to be on the show, guys, definitely. You but should do it. Last time I gave you um, Wild Nothing's album Nocturne, which we both enjoyed, and it was it had a very definite '80s sound. And now this time you're back with your pick. Uh, and it's funny because mine is from the 80s. 1988, this album came out. It's Camper Van Beethoven, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart. And when you first asked me to do this show, I wrote down a list of albums I wanted to do, and I don't think any of them were from the 80s. I hadn't intended to go that route. So it's funny, you picked an album for me that had that sound, and in the end, this is what I picked for you. Um, I thought you would really enjoy it. I hope you do. I think it's. I just think it's a brilliant album. Um I remember in the 80s, I listened to alternative kind of music, The Cure, The Smiths, Depeche Mode, you know, all that really kind of quintessential 80s sound. And then this came out, I was a junior in high school, and it was just, there was something different about it. I just felt like something was happening, Um, what they were saying, the sounds, the influences they were bringing in, it just set itself apart. And it's one of the only albums from that time in my life that I've really never stopped listening to. And it's never lost any of its impact for me. It's just has resonated since, since then. It's, um, I think it's just a really wonderful album. I'm excited to share it with you. Nice. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it then. Guys, you are listening to Camper Van Beethoven and their album, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart. We'll see you at the end. All right, guys, that was Camper Van Beethoven and their, be- and their song, I mean song, album rather, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart. First thoughts, Miss Arrestus. Well, thanks again, Hudson. That was really um, that was really fun for me to kind of pick out and share. And like I said, I've been listening to this album since I was a junior in high school, and it's crazy to think it's thirty years almost. But we don't need to talk about that. Um, I mean, you're 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 just turning thirty though. Like you were one oh, of those yeah, one exactly. wonder kids, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like you... Thank you, thank you. Yes. Um, but you know, so I've been listening to this album even more in anticipation of us doing this, and I've just, I'm finding things in it I've never found before, and different connections, and you even said something that right when we started playing it, you said, geez, this really reminds me of REM sound, and I've never thought that before, and you couldn't be more dead on. I think his voice has a Michael Stipe quality at times, and you know, that I just thought that was brilliant. I've never thought of that. When you said it, I, I think you couldn't be more right. Well, just when I first started listening to this, cause I didn't know what to expect because when you brought up this album, we were in this, we were in the store together and you were just kind of like talking about it. And you're, like, and you're like, Jonathan was really like, you picked that? And so I, I was immediately like already kind of like, all right, like what's it going to be? And then I, heard, I was like, okay, like this is like an REM sound. Like I will like, I'm down with this. And, but not only is it an REM sound, as we find out later throughout this whole album, it goes everywhere. It we does. We go reggae, we go Middle Eastern, we go ska, like, everywhere. I feel it, for me, though, it's a definitely a West Coast-feeling album, just because I'm like, all those places seem to come more together musically there than over here in the East Coast, where we're kind of meticulous, very, like, this is the sound we're going for, we're doing this, we're doing that. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, and I think when I was saying, uh, before the album, before we listened to it, saying that... When I first heard this, there was just something different about it. And I think that that's it. The 80s sound was, as you know, you know, a lot of synthy. Yeah. Um, it just had that, that 80s feel. And this has an alternative feel from that era, but it's just different. And I think it's because they draw on so many different influences. And versus the synthesizer, which you might hear in a lot of 80s yeah. music, the violin is what's driving this album. And I think that's that's crazy. Well, violin and horns. I've noticed there's a lot of horn. I'm like, I like that. Like, that's... That's very interesting to me because I'm like, not a lot of albums do take an instrument that's kind of not under underused in a genre and then just bring it to the forefront and being like, no, this is what we're running with. Like, it's phenomenal. Like, yeah. I, so, like, I really enjoyed this album. Um, song that stuck out to me was Oh Death just because it was slow and it reminds me kind of of a Leonard Cohen song. Oh, but, interesting. And for you Leonard Cohen fans, his, album, his new album, You Want It Darker, is coming out soon. It looks like it's going to be good. He's amazing. I, I just recently got into his yeah. stuff not knowing that he wrote Hallelujah, of course. Yes, he oh, did. And he wrote 107 verses. I mean, 
Needless to say, yeah. there will be a show yeah. definitely on Leonard Cohen in the near future, but it was very Cohen-ish. Um, but yeah, a lot of these songs, West Coast, obviously, one of my favorite songs, probably the favorite song is One of These Days. Yes. For me, I don't know what it is, but when you mentioned like hanging out with like your friends and stuff and like, it did, that song took me back to high school where I'm like, I'm hanging out with Darren, me and Gunnar are doing this thing, we're gonna go play this later and go do that and just something about it was very like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, that song, it, it, it's, um, you know, I had a group of friends in high school that we listened to a lot of music together and um, you know, we got all got our driver's licenses. We would just drive around and listen to yeah. albums, and that's you know that's what you did. I think that's what you do in high school when you get older. I don't know. You just kind of drive well, around and listen to music yeah, and talk. That's... And um, I ran into them. I was telling you this. I ran into a few of those guys years later. I mean, maybe within the last ten years. I hadn't seen them really since high school. And that song came up, and we all just broke out and sang the chorus of that song together. And I haven't seen him since. But it was like we were right back where saying, we had been. It was such, such a, a bond. Yeah, yeah. That's so, like, that, like, that's, like, that speaks to me, like, really about the power of music. Just, like, mm -hmm. the fact that, like, you got, like, and that you all, like, what, probably one of you started, and then immediately everyone picked up, knew exactly where, like, oh, yeah. just something, like, that's, A, the sign of a good friendship, but B, like, that common thread of just, like, this can very heavily unite us together. Yeah, and like, I think I, I think we spoke about this last when we recorded um, our last show for the Wild Nocturne. Wild Nocturne. Wild nothing. But, Wild nothing. But the album's Nocturne. See, Thank like it's you. very. I'll give. Trust me. I I call it the wrong name like twenty times a day, even though it's one of my top time like top ten albums. But, Thanks, Hudson. Oh, no, no, nice. No. Oh, trust but, me. I. But we, you know, we were talking about just the power of music, and it can bring you back to another place. And yeah. and you know, I was actually listening to um, an interview with Andrew Bird the other day, who I I adore, and he said the art of good songwriting is not to make it so obviously personal to you that no one else can connect to it. You need to have a little bit of ambiguity and mystery in it so that people can make it theirs. Yeah. And I think that that's how we connect to things because it personally become belongs to us in some way and to our memories and to our friendships. And that's, this album does that a lot for yeah. me. You know, I'd like, I like I said, going into this, like I didn't know what to expect. I loved it. I loved that they, they could do all these different genres in one album. And you told me, we talked about this, the fact that, like, if I had just heard one of these songs on its own, like, the way I, sometimes I discover bands mm. and stuff, this would be a band, I'd probably be like, I would go maybe two or three songs and be like, all right, these are all right. But as an album, it works so well. Everything, each piece, like, it's a puzzle. Each piece fits perfectly and it makes this picture of this album, it's very well done. Yeah, I think that that, like you said, is the importance of listening to something from start to finish. And, yeah. and hearing the whole overall kind of meaning or, or movement behind it. And, and I think even with albums, and I have have tended to do this with even this album, I've listened to it so many times, but by the time I get to the end of it, my attention span has gone elsewhere. So yeah. even the end of the album now is newer to me after 30 years than the beginning because yeah, I haven't you, made it to the end as many out. times. Well, I find that it's a big thing with actually people that listen to full albums too. Like I'll mention, because sometimes like, um, like we were mentioned talking about the fool, how it ends on a very high energy note and then just stops. Um, the fact like that draws you back in, but like I'll mention that to someone. I'll be like, "Oh, my favorite song was this song," and they'll be like, "Oh, it was one of the later songs, right?" Right, right, and be right. The deeper cut, and I'll be like, "Yeah, it is, but so." Yeah, and that's the importance of just trying to find that quiet time and moment to exactly. make it through. That's what I'm hoping this show does for you guys. It's oh, like, oh yeah, you play, you play it at a certain time. You could kind of sit down, maybe have a drink or two, just sit, relax, just do your thing. But hey, you know, um, one thing listening through this to the end just recently gave me a whole new meaning. Um, preparing for the show, thinking about it. I've always said this is one of my favorite album titles, Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart. I think it's so great. And when you make it to the end and you hear the song Tanya, it's the second to last song, yeah. the song is about her and she is the beloved revolutionary sweetheart of the album. And the, this quote is that she saved us from boredom, from driving around every night from five to seven. We carry your gun in our hearts for no apparent reason we want to be on television. And that struck me because, A... At, at as a teen, listened to this so many times, probably driving around from five yeah, to seven with my friends. Car, yeah. <laughs> this album probably saved us from boredom. But also, they're saying she's this 
you know, revolutionary sweetheart that they carry so much in their hearts, but they don't really know even why they're carrying her. They just want the glory of being a part of something bigger. Yeah. And I think that that's something as youth that we, um, you know, I think that's why later in your your teen years and your early 20s rebellion you you want to like shake things up you want to change yeah. the structure and the paradigm and the order of the world because you want to belong to something bigger but sometimes it's hard to figure out what that bigger thing, thing is, is going to yeah. be so i think for me that 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 really is extremely poignant and that and i i don't think i even really came to that conclusion until this summer listening to this album again thinking about doing the show so thank you for that opportunity to rediscover Anytime, yeah. something all right guys well we're going to wrap it up for this time you're definitely coming back however awesome. i'm not going to say the album yet Ooh. to on air at least i'll definitely we'll have a couple of hints because i think the time this show airs will be in november so you might be pulled for a Christmas show, because I'm doing some Christmas albums. Ooh. So that would be interesting. But definitely we're in the works for something really big on New Year's Eve, so follow us on all the socials for that Project Lightning Falcon on Facebook. Post about the new shows and when they're on. Or on Twitter at Pro Light Falcon. You know, you can follow us there. We tweet about an hour or two before the show goes up, saying what we're listening to, so that way you guys know what you're getting for. And you can click the WRGY link that I'll post up so you can listen to this show or any WRGY show live. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Like, we need to do this. You mentioned it earlier. We need to do this every day. I'm definitely, yeah. if you want to do it, like, I'm here every so day. So much fun. It's it really so much is. fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks for providing me um, a place where we can just talk about music and really just talk Anytime. and talk and talk. It's the it's it's a joy. Thank you, Hudson. Not this a is problem. great. Yeah, no. All right, guys, this has been the Sunday Sit-Down. We air every Sunday. Hope to see you guys next time where we might be going a little into space with uh, some stardust, but we'll leave that up to you guys. See you next time.